It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us to talk about his book, Barstool Theology, Crafting the Good Life, is Trevor Gunlock. Thanks for being here, Trevor. Absolutely, Kyle. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to spending some time with you here this morning. Yeah, Crafting the Good Life. I see what you did there. Very clever. And <laughs> so speaking of, what would be your favorite kind of beer? Oh, man, it, it all depends on the season, really. And I talk about that in one of the chapters, but uh-huh. for every season in life, there's a different beer, and every season of the year, there's a different beer. So right now, yeah. uh, actually, earlier this week, there's a rainy day that was a little humid. I'm like, you know, a brown ale would really hit the spot. So I had a local one from Yellow Springs Brewery, and man, did it make <laughs> that rainy day a little less rainy. <laughs> so Barstool Theology is partially about theology of alcohol. And so... How would you define that? What does that mean? Absolutely. So it's a fun topic because it's one that no one's really explored in the way that I tried to explore. Mm -hmm. And I took all the content directly from students that I worked with when I was teaching and doing ministry at the University of Dayton. And a lot of people approach the topic of the theology of alcohol of, hey, this is an ethics issue. Is it right or wrong? I'm like, okay, we can ask that question for certain ethical issues that have to do with dignity of human life. Those big ones that have to do with is this truly impactful on who we are as humans? This one's more of that gray zone of, is it more or less fulfilling for us? Because it's not a dignity of human life type issue. So a theology of alcohol uh, isn't focused on this, hey, is it right or wrong question, but more of what are the questions that we ask around theology that make our experience more fulfilling, aka growing our community, growing us closer to others, growing us closer to God, rather than making us feel more empty uh, and missing the mark, as in sinful modes. So that's kind of what I mean by a theology of alcohol, is the questions uh, around alcohol that really make that experience more fulfilling for us. Well, and whenever you talk about that, this that this book is filling that void of, I, I think it's interesting how you put it, is that part of the problem is that we aren't asking good questions. And so if we're not asking good questions, then we're obviously not going to be getting good answers. So how do we ask good questions. Yeah. I say, don't take it from me. Take it from Jesus. Like he's the real rock star (laughs) here. He always encouraged his disciples and listeners to think deeper, not by just listening to what he said, but by asking a question. So when he asked, instead of just being like, Hey, I'm the savior, I'm coming to change your lives. He said, who do you say that I am? And that challenged his followers to really answer that question for themselves in relation with him. So I encourage readers in the book, uh, each chapter is actually a different question that I ask. And I say, if you ask all these questions and you find yourself answering them in a way that leads to fulfillment, then your drinking experience as a whole will be more fulfilling. So real quick, the questions I ask are, uh, with whom do you drink? A theology of friendship. What do you drink? A theology of art and craft beer. And that's a really fun chapter. Mm -hmm. Uh, Third is, when do you drink? A theology of the seasons, which you were kind of hinting at earlier. And last is, uh, why do you drink? A theology of celebration, what it truly means to celebrate. And last, I kind of have these fun, uh, how do I drink well, which are all these fun little ways to actually do what we're talking about in the chapters. So instead of just forcing people like, hey, listen to me, it's if you ask these true questions with a little bit of guidance, you're going to have a good experience and grow your community and grow closer to God. And how do we avoid... I guess, some of the negative experiences with alcohol and I, where does it cross the line beyond this is something that's bringing me joy and making me a better person, or at least it's a positive influence on me versus a negative? Yeah. And that's tough because this question of fulfillment, which comes from Aristotle and further developed from Aquinas of eudaimonia, this term fulfillment, is a little bit more subjective in the sense that we know what brings us fulfillment and what makes us feel empty. Uh, so that line that you talk about is tough because when we talk about crossing that line, we're oftentimes talking quantitatively instead of qualitatively. Mm. So when we look at a drinking experience from qualitative perspective, And we start realizing, ooh, when I surround myself with like these people that really outside of this experience draw me closer to God, I find that in this drinking experience, I'm being filled with joy. So the people we surround ourselves with is key. Or no one's going to find 
beer bottles and cans of like craft beer, oftentimes in gutters or shotgunning craft beers is kind of a crazy concept. We're not going to, we're less likely to abuse artistic things. So if we engage with artistic beverages, we're less likely to, like you say, maybe cross that line or go to that place of emptiness. Um, and if we're also gauging our own temperature, gauging our own situation in life and realizing, man, this might not be the best time for me to drink or dang, this is a big celebratory moment. I really want to celebrate with friends in this moment. Then our understanding of where we're at in relation to that line uh, will really come into focus. So that's where those questions are key, where we're not laying out a pure roadmap, like, here you go. This is the way moving forward. But if you can ask yourselves these questions and discern prayerfully when you enter into that drinking experience, then you'll find that you're going to surround yourself with the right people and drink the right things and drink at the right times for the right reasons, which all contribute to that experience. Yeah. And one of the distinctions you make is the difference between celebrating people versus celebrating actions. Can you explain the difference between those two? Yeah, this is a really, really neat one. It came from growing up when I would pray with my family. Uh, My dad would always ask this question, for whom or for what do you pray? And every night, Mm. my brothers and I would just riddle off all these things. Like, I pray that I have a good day tomorrow, that I have fun at tennis practice, that this test I don't totally bomb and fail. And we found that we're praying for all these actions. But then my little brother, being the total rock star that he is, he would start, we would come home, and he would be praying and say, hey, I pray for this person and for this priest that's sick and for my friend at school. And we're like, dang, you just put a name or a face and a name to your prayer instead of just praying for an action. Because I find that when we just get together to celebrate some action, whether that's, hey, we're just going out drinking tonight, like how to ask college students who are going out. I got to live in a freshman dorm for two years when I was doing <laughs> ministry, uh, which was a fun place to do, quote, research. Uh, <laughs> I would ask them this question, like, what are you celebrating tonight? They're like, we're going drinking. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, what are you doing? Well, we're hoping to dance and like hang out with friends. I'm like, no, that's all good. But what are you celebrating? And they're like, well, we don't really know. And whenever they were mm-hmm. then able to put a name or face to their celebration of like, oh, no, we're going out and celebrating Luis's birthday, another year of life that we get to hang out with Luis, then everything else around them kind of changed subtly into, oh, we're not just drinking for the sake of drinking. Drinking becomes part of this greater celebration in which we're celebrating a person. And that's similar to the way we look at the mass too, the Catholic mass and that if we go simply just to sing, to eat, to drink, to process, to sit down, stand up, it looks like a lot of actions. But the beautiful thing with the mass is that we're also celebrating Christ present in the community, present in the priest, present in the Eucharist, present in the word. And when we can celebrate Christ present and the actions, the actions then become part of a greater whole and everything gets put in perspective. Yeah. We're talking with Trevor Gunlock. The book is Barstool Theology, Crafting the Good Life. And I feel like a lot of what you're saying here is it it comes down to intentionality. And really, this is probably true with most things in our life, not to do it just because everybody else is doing it. And like, this is just what we do. This is like some kind of cultural expectation, but Mm. to be intentional about our actions. And is this a positive thing? Is this a negative thing? How is it going to impact me? And why am I doing it is really the bigger question. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating because, again, the book's written for the audience of young adults, but uh, really written for anyone who might drink or might not drink. And just a new way to talk about theology, maybe through the lens of beer, I call them the theological beer goggles, or talk about beer through the lens of theology. And people can approach it in whichever way they find most uh, approachable. And it's just a new way of looking at our experience at alcohol because, again, we don't really get much guidance on this from the church or from uh, spiritual figures. I would ask my spiritual director, like, hey, I'm, I, go, I like to like, go celebrate with my friends. I really uh, enjoy good beer. How does this fit into my spirituality? And he was just like, I don't know, man. Like, that's, <laughs> you're kind of on your own. And that was a common response a lot of uh, students were getting, I found, or young adults. Or people would just shun it and be like, oh, no, you can't talk about that. Like, that's one of those topics you don't, just don't touch. I'm like, wait, this is like a significant part of our lives. Like, celebration should be a key focus in who we are as Christians and Catholics. Yeah, and I don't hear people talking about, like, the proper way to celebrate. We talk a lot about the proper way to fast, 
not that we're necessarily mm. doing a great job of it, uh, but <laughs> you know, we, we definitely have, especially during Lent, we talk a lot about fasting and giving things up, but I don't feel like we talk a lot about celebrating and feasting. Yeah, it's the flip side of the coin that's oftentimes hidden. If people look at Catholics, they'd be like, man, there are always those people in like fat cloth and ashes who are <laughs> walking around being like, I have sinned. I am awful. I always have to be fasting. And I say that we're oftentimes, we're too often on our knees that we forget to stand up and join Christ at the table. Uh, mm. And I think it's a balance. There's a beauty to the type of prayer that's contrition and asking for forgiveness. I think that plays a key role in who we are. But if we're always on our knees and we're never at the table with Christ celebrating, we're missing out on, I think, the major half of our faith that is actually alluring to others. So in a sense, this is a new evangelization tactic of if we truly know how to celebrate in every day rather than simply living in a state of pure contrition and asking for forgiveness, our faith is more attractive. Like, hey, whoa, what are you celebrating? Oh, I'm celebrating this as part of my faith not just I'm out partying or I'm just at home with sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. What do you hope people get out of the book? Oh man, that's a great, a great question. I think it's the start of a conversation and a couple questions just to simply prayerfully reflect on. So I really hope that those reading it uh, will be able to ask those questions of themselves and also their community and say, is my drinking experience fulfilling? And if not, how can I make it more fulfilling? And I tried to make it to an audience that uh, maybe doesn't have a theological background. People can approach this from any lens or the peer person with a the theological background can approach it and see it as a voice in that community. But to really see it as how do I ask myself these good questions uh, to not only transform the way I drink, but I think, and a couple of my friends who've already gotten their uh, hands on it are saying, dude, this is really applicable in other areas of my life too. I was expecting for this just to be about beer. So it's a way of just transforming the nature of who we are uh, as Catholics into celebratory people. I like it. And I think it's not only a great book, a great gift as well, maybe mm -hmm. uh, something you pass on to young adult, but again, not just for young adults as well. So where can people get the book and find more about you online? A hey, great question. So you can find the book uh, on my uh, publisher's website, which is our Sunday visitor. If you look them up, you'll find it there. You can also find it on all other major book sales stores, such as Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, uh, various other Catholic book publishing companies or resources online. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at the handle at Barstool Theology. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook just by my name, Trevor Gunlock, uh, or I have a website, which is barstooltheology.net, and that's .net. So any of those ways to get in touch with me, uh, whether it's questions about the book, to order the book yourself, or if you're interested in having me come speak uh, or have me on a podcast or any type of speaking engagement. I love hanging out with groups and really opening up the discussion about something that's often neglected. I like it. All right, again, it's barstooltheology.net, and the book is Barstool Theology, Crafting the Good Life. Thank you so much, Trevor Gunlock, for sharing it with us. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on.